All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm down here by the Fenway, and um, I was told that a lot of the kids from the the dorms are moving out. I guess it's due to the coronavirus. So let's see what we see. Everybody's supposed to start like this morning. Some started like a little bit yesterday. And today is March the 14th. It's about 11 p.m. So let's see what we see. Now, there's a lot of kids that go to these dorms, so it's going to be a lot of people moving out of here. So let's see what's going on here. <clears throat> let this let these cars go because these cars are going to be like like right in front of us. <clears throat> How you doing? Watch the uh, traffic here. Let's take a walk across and see what we see going on here. Now, I don't know when these kids are coming back, but I know they're moving out. So let's take a walk down here and see what we see. So they use those orange bins to transport their stuff from their dorms to their vehicles. And just about everybody in these dorms are all moving out of there. I don't think anybody's going to be staying, to my knowledge anyway. And this, is, this has been going on since this morning, guys. Take a walk down here and see what else we can see because you're going to see a lot of this. Now, I'm not sure if this is true, but I heard that the kids cannot get their money back for their tuition for living in the dorm. I'm not sure if that's 100% true or not, but I have to do some research on that to find out for sure. And by the way, guys, Marty Welch, Marty Welch, uh, mayor of Boston, yesterday he made an announcement that Tuesday, I believe March the 17th, there's no Boston Public Schools. Now, he's a little late for making that announcement. He should have made it a lot sooner. He should have aired on the side of precaution way before that. But I also heard the reason, well, one of the reasons why he cancel school is because the city of Boston does not have any soap in any of the men's or women bathroom. Now, I can verify that myself. I went to Boston Public Schools. There is no soap in any of the bathrooms. Any of the bathrooms. So, Mighty Walsh, if you're listening, we want to know why are you and your superintendent allowing the Boston Public Schools to have no soap in the bathrooms? It's unsanitary and it's not healthy. You need to wake up and do something about it. This is your city. <clears throat> now, 
not only that, there's a lot of stuff going on in his watch. We'll talk about that later. But Marty Walsh, he's a bandwagon. He only jumps on the bandwagon. He doesn't do nothing unless he sees other people doing it. He has no motivation, no any initiative to run the city. Nor do I think he's even qualified to do it. He, he's basically bought and paid for by the investors. He's, he caters to the unions and he's paid by the investors. That's, a, that's his only interest. He does nothing else for the city. Only time you see Marty Walsh on the news media when he's trying to answer questions he don't have answers for. He's a politician. That's what they do. Politicians don't give you the truth, nor, they, nor do they want the truth. So uh, back to this video here. All the people are moving out because of the uh, coronavirus scare. Um, it's not a good thing that these people have to move out because they can't stay in there. But uh, yet you still have public transportation running. Uh, they say no large gatherings. Last I remember, if I go down to downtown crossing, that's a large public gathering. Any of those transit systems is a large public gathering. Um, the Registry of Motor Vehicles, large public gathering. When is the state going to wake up and step up to the plate first? All these colleges and universities make more decisions better than the people in charge. Uh, is that by accident or is that by coincidence? Or is it that they just don't, they don't care? No, I, I, I kind of figure that they don't care because anytime you can have a government doing stuff in a city without letting the city know about it, that tells you they don't care. They're not accountable for anything. As a matter of fact, I tried calling Marty Walsh's office numerous times. Not even a phone call return from anybody. Not even a spokesperson, not even a secretary, not even an aide. Nobody in Marty Walsh's congregation even returns phone calls. As a matter of fact, I went down there personally a few times. Marty Walsh is doing nothing but lip service. Lip, when I say lip service, I mean lip service. He doesn't do anything else but lip service. This city is way behind as far as infrastructure, as far as awareness, emergency preparing, preparing, and the grid, a whole lot of stuff. The water and sewer treatment services, all that stuff, we're way behind on that. This stuff should have been updated long, long, long time ago. Um, unfortunately, this, even when it comes to this kind of outbreak, the hospitals are not even prepared. I've worked in numerous different hospitals, and they don't even really have a protocol, per se. They have a protocol, but it's for other stuff. But they don't even utilize it anymore. Like they, It goes away with the wind. Matter of fact, we have an evacuation route that's mocked throughout the city that no one knows what it's for anymore. No one knows. I went down to City Hall and asked questions about the evacuation route. They said it's outdated and it's non-existent. Outdated and non-existent. And this is from 9-11, the evacuation route. Many of y'all are too young to know what I'm talking about. But throughout the city, on main roads, you'll see some signs, uh, white and blue, and they uh, point to an evacuation route through the city. And a lot of people don't know what they're for because the city does not enforce it anymore because they don't use it, utilize it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna see if I can find one of those evacuation routes for you guys. Because they're, they're, they're around the city. So once I, once I walk over here to the next corner, you should be able to find an evacuation route sign up here which nobody knows is what it's for. And if you don't believe me, you can um, call City Hall or 311 if you're in uh, the city of Boston. If you're not in the city of Boston, you can call 
uh, 635-4000 or 635-4500 uh, and you will get the uh, mayor's hotline which is 311 and you can ask him ask ask, ask them uh, what is the city of Boston's evacuation route plan like what it entails and what's the how does it work and they, they couldn't tell you because they don't have any valid information on it. it's supposed to be updated every year if we're supposed to be so vigilant and so alert we should never drop that guide in the first place but nevertheless that's our city people for you so let's take a walk to this corner and see if we see one of those uh, evacuation uh, routes that they have or the sign that they have. Now years ago they used to pass out these flyers that would kind of tell you uh, it kind of, uh, let me give you a, a little idea what it was on there. It basically depends on what part of the city you was in. And it used further it was close, closer to out of the city, it's just pointing you that way. And if you was more in the center of the city, it will, it, there will be arrows that point you in four different directions away from the city. So if you was downtown Boston, it would be multiple different directions where you could go. But if you're like more on the outskirts, it usually sends you back the, the way you came. So let's see if we if they still have these signs up here, the evacuation route. They they they're all over the city, so you can't miss them. So uh, I think there's one coming up right now, and they have not utilized these signs, nor have they um, practiced them. I could tell you what I know about them when I used to work in the hospital field. Uh, if there was ever evacuation route like evacuation process. Uh, Mass Ave, for example, we had, now you have inbound and outbound traffic. The police will block off all the roads and make it so all traffic would be outbound, no traffic inbound. If you was on a main road like Columbus Ave or Tremont Street, all those would be outbound, outbound traffic. So. The direction of this sign right now is facing, which I'm on the Huntington Ave right now, all four of these lanes will potentially be evacuation routes. There'll be no inbound traffic coming in if you were to actually utilize this. Now, the kicker is you're just evacuating off the city. There's no particular destination where they say you will go to. You just go out of the city. So that's another thing. And there was never really a real protocol that gave out flyers. And that was only after 9-11. After 9-11 had taken place, where they say, see something, say something. Then all of a sudden, that kind of died away. Uh, you heard a lot about anthrax. Anthrax died away. So a lot of stuff that supposedly was in place has just disappeared, as if it just went away on its own. So, how and why, we don't know about that, but it's, it's kind of weird how they can have something in place that's supposed to be emergency uh, preparedness, and then they forget about it. Like, just literally forget about it. Like, they spend a lot of money on these so-called bomb-proof trash barrels, for example. Millions and millions of dollars on bomb-proof trash barrels. To accomplish nothing, literally to accomplish nothing. Um, they spend a lot of money on all this campaigning about anti-terrorism and all this stuff, and then we never heard anything else about Al Qaeda again. Then all of a sudden, ISIS came into the picture. What happened to Al Qaeda? We have no idea. They disappeared. So now the new terrorists are ISIS. So it seems like. They create these people and make it seem like they're against us. And when we have no actual facts that they are against us. So you gotta be careful for the government propaganda without the actual facts. And then when Donald Trump says fake news, 
he's not too far away from the fake news. You know, he he's he's on to something when he says that. He's not he he you may not like him, but he speaks his mind and to me like I'd rather be somebody be honest with me and show their true colors than sugarcoat it. So when Donald Trump says stuff, he, he doesn't really use a script. Very seldom does he use a script. And he does use one, but he doesn't use it that often. But a lot of times he just free speaks. And that's the way a president should be. A president should be able to speak freely and not have a script prepared for him that he has nothing... He has no agenda about in the first place. So, uh, like I said, a lot of these kids at these college dorms are moving out. And who knows when they'll be back. We, When they're gonna come back? This is kind of like a deserted area too. It's not. It's not a lot of people out here. And honestly, to be honest with you, if this was to be a red zone, as far as like quarantining wise, this would be the red zone because this is a highly um, utilized area. This area, um, downtown Boston. Um, the Fenway area, these areas are highly used areas with multiple people that come out call through here. It's a lot of people that come through here. So if this was an area of concern, this this will be the main focus because you have college kids, you have patients, you have visitors, you have tourists, you have people from all walks of life that come through this area at any given time. So if this was to become like an, an affected zone, this would be that affected zone, whether you know it or not. This would be that that area. I'm just trying to give you guys a footage like based on what's going on here, because a lot of you don't know about this area. You know, a lot of you have never been down here before. So if you've never been down here before, you don't really know this area that I'm talking about. But this is uh, right near Wentworth Institute, not too far from us, um, College of Art. Um, what else is over here? You get all the hospitals, the next couple streets over, like Longwood Ave, uh, Francis Street area, Fenwood Road. Um, all those areas over there. So this is a um, very highly traveled area. Right now we're on, um, I believe this is Evans Way. Evans Way going towards, uh, what's that street over there? The River Way, I believe it is. Oh, I'm not sure if it's, yeah, this must be the river. Park Drive is on the other side. This must be the River Way. Just gonna give you guys a little bit more footage of what's going on here. It's not as crazy as it could be. I think it was a little bit more busy earlier, but most of the people have like moved out, and maybe later on there might be some old people moving out because um, it is pretty. Uh, you know, it's kind of scary when you, you get a lot of colleges and universities shutting down. Uh, they're saying no public gatherings. Uh, they're telling people to work from home. People are going to stores buying up all the toilet paper, um, paper towels, water, um, you name it, they're pretty much buying it up. So that's, you know, it brings people into a more panic when they see a lot of that going on. And some people are just buying stuff because they see other people buying stuff. They don't even know why. They say, well, this guy's going to stock up, so I'm going to stock up. And it's not a bad thing, but what it does now, it creates a, a not quite a panic, but a, a, a major concern. We'll call it that way. We don't want to call it a panic. Even some people may panic, but it causes a great concern. 
and you go to some of the stores now. I've been to a few stores and the shelves are, are you know, pretty empty. Yeah. Water is going to be almost obsolete. Hand sanitizer is like like almost history. You you can find regular soap and stuff like that, but a lot of that stuff is going off the shelves pretty quick, guys. Like I said, there's an earlier earlier video I did maybe a month ago, or maybe earlier than a month ago. I said that this coronavirus is more serious than we think, and um, the reason why it's more serious than we think. It's two things. We're not really quite sure how it originated, and you're not quite sure how it's being spread. Now, that alone is enough to cause a lot of concern. The other major concern is you're not sure who has it. And when you don't know who has it, or if you have it yourself, that's even a bigger concern because now you got compound concerns on top of each other. So now you're trying to figure out how it got started, how it got to where it got to, who has it, and do you have it? That alone is enough to concern you. Not to mention the other factors on it. How bad is it? How long would it last? And how could it be controlled? So then you got more issues on top. So all this with no answers, guess what? That causes a lot of confusion. So what I suggest, is people do a lot of research on the coronavirus. Do a lot of research on it. Um, is this some speculation? I don't want to say facts, as I, I like to say to my knowledge that it was a man made virus. Um, it's more speculation that it's because you acquire it, you get it. That I'm not 100% sure. I'm just saying speculation wise because I don't have all the facts. But you guys uh, have ability to think on your own. You guys have the ability to do research on your own. I can't tell you everything because I don't know everything. Some of you guys out there are smarter than I am. So now you call it university, guys. Do the research. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you. You, you see, and you guys work in MIT, you guys work in Harvard. I'm pretty sure you guys have a lot of resources out there and a lot of input on what you think. Some of you guys work in biochemistry labs. You tell me, how far-fetched is it? How far-fetched is it? And, um, a, like I said, there's a lot going on that we don't really take, take into consideration. Let's see what we got here. Let's see. So they're basically telling you this is the two centralized checkout locations they have. So these, I guess these people, uh, if you're gonna check out, this is the protocol you gotta follow to check out. Um, Pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of people checking out because they tell them they can't go back to school. And if you can't go back to school, then why are you gonna stay there? Like, why would you stay somewhere where you're not welcome? Um, so obviously you you would check out. So I'm gonna get a little bit more footage on these college kids moving out, and then. Uh, I would sign off on this. I don't want to alarm anybody, but it is what it is, guys. You can't make this stuff up. Everybody's moving out. And uh, until next time, guys, I'm Neza Porter, and I will keep you guys informed on what's going on as much as I know anyway. If I don't know, I, I can't tell you. But if I do know, I will share it with you. you Some things, you know, you guys should be able to figure out on your own. But um, it's very important that you guys do some research. Especially the young kids, though. The young minds, young minds are open minds. But uh, 
Keep up the good work, guys. Until next time, I'm Neza Porter, and I'm signing out.